Let's uh, consider power requirements of a pump that's being used to uh, convey water uh, from one tank to another. Uh, so we will uh, revisit uh, Bernoulli equation. Uh, note that in our previous module we saw that Bernoulli equation is uh, uh, P for pressure plus 1 by 2 rho u bar square plus rho g z equals constant. We can also uh, rewrite this by dividing with rho uh, with p over rho plus 1 by 2 u bar square plus g z equals constant. Now we need to introduce a couple of terms into Bernoulli equation to account for both the frictional loss of energy as the uh, fluid, in our case water, flows through the piping system and also we need to introduce the work done by the pump uh, and we will represent those with, with terms EF for frictional loss and uh, EP for the work done by the pump. So we will rewrite uh, Bernoulli equation uh, for uh, two locations in the uh, system P2 divided by rho plus 1 by 2 u bar 2 square plus g z2 plus ef equals P1 divided by rho plus 1 by 2 u1 bar square plus g z1 plus ep. So we have the friction loss of energy and the pumping requirements. Now we can rearrange the terms as EP equals P2 minus P1 divided by rho plus 1 by 2 U2 square minus U1 square plus G Z2 minus Z1 plus EF. And let's look at these individual terms on the right hand side. Uh, the first term there is for pressure energy, the next one is kinetic energy, the third one is related to potential energy, and then the uh, energy related to frictional loss. So pressure energy is the change in pressure from location 1 to 2. So if we happen to connect two tanks that are open to atmosphere, then of course the pressures at location 1 and 2 will be the same, uh, so P1 minus P2 will be 0. On the other hand, we could have one tank under pressure or could be under vacuum. So a more complete expression then for the uh, pressure energy is uh, delta P over rho equals P2 minus P1 divided by rho. Of course we are assuming that rho is constant, the density remains constant, so it is an incompressible fluid uh, which is true for a liquid, in our case for example water. Now let's also check the units. So we know the units of pressure are force per unit area, so force is expressed in newtons, so we have newton divided by square meters and then of course density is kilograms per meter cube. One of the meters will cancel out so we have Newton meter over kilograms and uh, Newton times meter is force times distance which means work and the unit for work is uh, joule. So we have for the numerator joule and in the denominator kilograms. So the units of pressure energy then are joules per kilogram. For kinetic energy term, the second term in our expression, we have used U bar to note that the velocity is uniform across the pipe cross section. Well, we know that is not true for uh, fluids uh, that uh, have viscous effect, uh, which causes a velocity profile uh, along the radial direction. Uh, so, to account for the non uniform velocity along the radial cross-section of a pipe, uh, we use a correction factor. So the kinetic energy term then is u2 square minus u1 square. Note that we have bar uh, 
placed on both u values to indicate that they are uniform divided by 2 and then we introduce the correction factor alpha for laminar flow alpha is 0 0.5 but for turbulent flow alpha equals 1 so in other words uh, in case of turbulent flow we can assume that uh, uh, the velocity is fairly uniform uh, in the uh, pipe cross section again in terms of units kinetic energy is uh, u square over 2 uh, we know that the velocity is meters per second so it will be meter square per second square if we multiply both numerator and denominator with kilograms we get kilogram meter square divided by kilogram second square uh, now we can uh, rearrange some of these terms so we can say kilogram meter divided by second square uh, and then uh, the parentheses meter divided by kilogram now note that uh, the quantities in the first ratio is for force uh, and uh, that is Newton's so Newton times meter per kilogram and of course Newton time meter is uh, joules so we have joules per kilogram the third term is the uh, potential energy term which is uh, G time Z2 minus Z1 uh, this is due to the change in elevation in the pumping system. The units in this case, G times Z, will equal, uh, since G is the acceleration due to gravity, and uh, acceleration units, as you know, are meter per second square. So we have meter per second square times meters for Z. Uh, that gives us meter square per second square and uh, then if you multiply by kilograms in both numerator and denominator we get kilogram meter square divided by kilogram second square um, that will give us kilogram meter per second square and meter per kilogram and uh, that we know that the quantities in the first ratio uh, represent force and that is in newtons so we have newton time meter per kilogram and uh, Newton time meter of course is joules so we have joules per kilogram now the frictional energy loss EF is actually made up of two different losses one is EF major so those are major losses and the second one is EF minor or minor losses now let's look at these uh, separately so EF major is uh, for a straight portion of a pipe and uh, note that in our development for friction factor we had the following expression F equals delta P times D divided by 2 L rho U square now we can rearrange that as delta P over rho equals 2 F U square times L divided by D so the EF major losses can be obtained by knowing the friction factor the velocity the length and the diameter of the pipe now the minor losses are due to various types of fittings that are used in, in the piping system so for example you use valves elbows T's there may be contractions or expansions so we need to consider those separately uh, let's look at the EF value for a contraction by contraction we mean that if we have a tank and the fluid from that tank is uh, uh, exiting through a pipe then suddenly there is a contraction of that uh, fluid as it enters from the tank into the small pipe and we account for that by using delta P over rho equals CFC which is the uh, uh, contraction losses uh, times U square divided by 2 and uh, where CFC can be calculated as 0 0.4 times 1.25 minus A2 over A1 when A2 over A1 is less than 0 0.715 and CFC equals 0 
times 1 minus a2 over a1 when a2 over a1 uh, is greater than 0 0.715. So you need to know the, the cross-sectional area of the tank and the cross-sectional area of the pipe. From there, you can find out the values for CFC. Now, if you have sudden expansion, that is where a pipe is connected to a tank and that pipe is bringing some liquid into the tank, so there is a sudden expansion, then we have delta P over rho equals CFE u square divided by 2. And uh, CFE then equals parentheses um, 1 minus A1 over A2, end of parentheses raised to power 2. Noting that location 1 is upstream from the expansion joint, and uh, 2 is the location downstream from the expansion joint. Now, energy loss due to various pipe fittings are obtained as delta P over rho equals CFF times U square divided by 2. For a range of different types of pipe fittings, we can obtain values of CFF uh, from a table. Uh, for an elbow, where the radius of the elbow is 45 degrees and it is flanged, then the value for CFF is 0 0.2. So depending on all the fittings that are used in the piping system, uh, we can sum up all the CFF values and then substitute those in our expression to find out delta P over rho. So to obtain the uh, power requirements of a pump, we rearrange the terms of our modified Bernoulli equation as EP equals P2 minus P1 divided by rho plus 1 by 2 U2 square divided by 2 minus U1 square divided by 2 plus G Z2 minus Z1 plus EF major plus EF minor. And uh, EF major uh, is uh, 2F U square L over D and EF minor includes all the minor losses due to expansion, contraction, and or due to uh, various fittings. Uh, so we have uh, CFE U square over 2 plus CFC U square over 2 plus CFF U square over 2. So if we uh, know all the terms on the right hand side of this equation, we can then calculate EP which is the energy requirement for pumping. And then from there we can find out the power requirement for a pump by multiplying EP with the mass flow rate. So you know the units of mass flow rate are kilograms per second. If you multiply that with the joules per kilogram, those are the units for EP, the uh, kilograms cancel out. So you have joules per second and that is uh, watts. That's the power requirement for the pump. So this expression can then be used uh, in a given problem uh, and uh, we can solve the problem if you know all the quantities on the right hand side of this equation to uh, determine the power requirements of a pump.